I'm Donna Saliska, and I'm the Scientific Director of the National Collaborating Center for Methods and Tools, and I'd like to welcome you to this series of sessions on evidence-informed public health. I'm with the National Collaborating Center for Methods and Tools, which is funded by the Public Health Agency of Canada and located at McMaster University. This introduction will take you through all of the steps of evidence-informed public health. But first, I'd like to tell you about all of the National Collaborating Centers for Public Health in Canada. There's a center that deals with a particular population, which is Aboriginal Health, and they're located in Prince George, Northern British Columbia. The Environmental Health Group is located in Vancouver. The Infectious Disease Group is in Winnipeg, and the Healthy Public Policy Group is in Montreal and Quebec City. Determinants of Health is in Antigonish, Nova Scotia, and Methods and Tools is at McMaster University in Hamilton. We're, we're interested in dealing with methods and tools for knowledge translation in public health, not uh, tools that are useful for clinical practice or community assessment, but actually what works to get public health evidence uh, into place. First of all, we'll talk about what's the definition of uh, evidence-informed public health. And it is the process of finding, appraising, distilling, and disseminating the best available evidence from research, both quantitative and qualitative research, and using that to inform and improve health policy and practice. It's important to focus on the fact that we're talking about the best research because even though we ideally would like to have high quality systematic reviews of, of randomized trials, that's often not possible in public health. And so we're dealing with finding whatever is the best evidence, um, maybe a cohort study or a, a cross-sectional study that would be useful for um, answering the questions we have about practice and policy. Put simply, it means finding, using, and sharing what works best in public health. I'd like to review a model that we've developed for, um, for looking at evidence-informed public health. In making any decision about a policy or practice for a community, you have to first think about what are the community issues, what it's, what's the local context for this issue that, of concern. Secondly, think about um, what the community preference would be in terms of actually accepting or using an intervention that you might be willing to offer, and what the political forces would be either to support or um, working against this intervention. For a long time, we've uh, ignored the research evidence in public health, and a lot of the focus of evidence-informed public health is actually getting us to use the evidence, finding and using evidence, and bringing that to bear in the decision-making. Then a very critical piece is looking at um, how many resources. What it, what's the money, the, the uh, people resources that we have to bring to bear to this particular community issue? And then it takes uh, considerable expertise on the part of individuals and groups to bring all of these factors together to make the final decision. Now, it sometimes looks like we're blindly applying research or that we're promoting the idea of applying re research without considering these other factors. And that's never the case. Research cannot be uh, applied without consideration of all of the other factors in this model. And often the most important factor for determining the decision is, has to do with the political process or the community will or the resources and not the research. So you may find some very high quality evidence that uh, will not work in your community. Um, but for so long we've uh, ignored research and there's some very good research that exists for public health that we would like to um, bring that to bear to decision making in evidence informed public health. So we're going to go through all of the stages involved in evidence based public health and this is an overview beginning with defining the question. When you define the question you're looking at um, being very concise and clear about what the actual issue is um, under consideration. So if you're not clear, um, if, you, if you go and look very broadly for a particular issue like um, respiratory diseases, for example, you'll find thousands of hits uh, in any database, which will be too overwhelming to even begin to um, answer your question. The next piece is to conduct a very efficient search. Um, as I said, if you go and, and are too broad in, in trying to answer your question and looking at a, a database, um, it's, there's so much research now that exists that it's easy to get overwhelmed. 
um, we have a, a goal that everyone would be able to find the very best evidence uh, to bring to bear on a question in five minutes or less. And so to do, to do that requires the development of some skills in searching. The next step is to do the critical appraisal. That's critically and efficiently appraising the studies that you do find. So you will find um, studies of varying degrees within the uh, research literature and uh, how do you know which one to pay attention to? How do you know which, which one is um, the most applicable to, to your community? And if you find five or six of those studies that uh, are giving you conflicting uh, conclusions about this particular intervention, how do you know which one to pay attention to? So how do you interpret the information and form recommendations for practice and policy? Even if you decide that this is very high quality research that you're going to pay attention to, the next point is to adapt the information to your own local community. Um, will, this, will this particular intervention work in your community given the political context and people's uh, willingness to, um, to use this information? If you think it's going to work, it can be adapted to your local community. The next step is to implement the inf information. How do you go about planning for uh, getting the healthcare practitioners or policymakers to actually use this research um, in, in the local context? And finally, the stage of evaluation, to evaluate the effectiveness of the implementation that you've undertaken. Um, how do you evaluate whether or not the policy has been uh, put in place, the practitioners are actually changing their behavior, and then finally, what impact does that have on the community? So we've gone through all of the stages. Uh, subsequent sessions will uh, go through each of those stages in much more detail. So I'd like to thank you for um, spending some time with these uh, sessions and draw your attention to our websites where you'll find tools and methods for each one of these phases. The website is uh, www.nccmt.ca or the French version is www.ccnmo.ca. And thank you very much.